Hello and for person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new potential resolutions to one of the mysteries of the universe. The mystery that was officially discovered only a few years ago by the New Horizons probe. The mystery related to the darkness of the universe itself. And more specifically, if we were to actually zoom in right here, focusing on some of the darkest spots in the universe, we'll start seeing a lot of background light. And some of the observations of this light from the New Horizons probe don't actually make sense. And so for the past few years, some of the scientists have been trying to resolve this with this new intriguing study that you can find in the description below, proposing a new explanation. Maybe it's actually because of dark matter. But anyway, let's take a few steps back and let's start with the discovery and the probe itself. New Horizons probe is of course one of the most important and most successful missions launched by NASA in the last decade or so. It took some incredible pictures of all of the objects it passed close to, and most importantly, it took some of the most incredible pictures of Pluto, Charon, and even more distant objects as well. The discoveries from Pluto alone were absolutely mind-blowing. And you can obviously find more about all of this in one of the previous videos in the description. But its mission is still not over. As a matter of fact, it's still doing a lot of science. And some of its science is currently done by basically trying to look at things where nobody has looked before. And since this probe has one of the most sensitive and most accurate cameras produced at that time, and is also currently located really far away from planet Earth. You can see where it is right now, right here. It's about 55 and a half astronomical units away from planet Earth. It essentially means that we can use this opportunity to start looking at various objects from the edge of the solar system. And so a few years ago, someone had a brilliant idea. Let's point this at one of the darker spots we have, and then try to see what comes out of this. And so here's one of the papers from 2017 announcing some of these results and some of these observations. But what could you possibly see if you looked at these dark areas? Well, because this camera is not really a telescope, it's not going to be seeing distant galaxies. It's mostly going to be seeing darkness, but it's still going to be seeing some background light, of which there are actually many different types. The most famous type of background light is what's known as CMB, the cosmic microwave background that sort of looks like this. But this you can only see in the microwave light, or microwave frequencies. New Horizons doesn't really have that or is not interested in seeing this. But there are other frequencies of light that can be observed by observing empty space. We obviously have X-ray gamma ray light, but in this case there is also optical light. Or essentially light that we should be able to see with our own eyes. And about 6 years ago we did have a prediction for how much of it should be detected if seen by various telescopes or various cameras. Now because most of these measurements previously have been done by the Hubble telescope, that's actually located very close to planet Earth, which means that it's not in the darkest possible place to observe this, a lot of the observations from Hubble because of this were not super accurate. But New Horizons was in a dark place, so its observations would be more accurate. And the observations were at least twice different from what was predicted. The background light was twice brighter, which back then meant several things. The first obvious explanation was that maybe there are just a lot more stars and a lot more galaxies out there. Maybe our estimates were wrong, and a lot of this optical background radiation is actually produced by many different types of stars that we're not seeing or didn't even know existed. But if so, it would create a lot of other problems for a lot of other theories. If there are way more galaxies and stars out there than we actually see or even predict it, well, that's not really an explanation. That just creates another problem. How do you explain that? And because we're not really seeing that many near us, it didn't really sit well with a lot of scientists. And so there were obviously other explanations. But now we have this really intriguing one that doesn't actually create more problems, but potentially solves a problem. It does, of course, involve dark matter. And the explanation is really simple. If there is a hypothetical particle known as axion, with an extremely specific mass determined in this paper, in the presence of very powerful magnetic fields, it would then decay into a pair of photons, producing the light we're observing. But the thing is, none of this is a new proposition or a new solution. This has been proposed many, many years ago. As a matter of fact, the original proposition for the existence of axions, the hypothetical particles, was made in the 1970s and it had nothing to do with dark matter whatsoever. It's actually the most popular solution to one of the biggest mysteries of physics, known as the strong CP problem. Now, I've actually explained this in one of the older videos that you can probably find somewhere in the description, and it does require possibly a few minutes to explain, uh, actually quite a lot of minutes. But in a nutshell, it's a problem with particle physics, and specifically quantum chromodynamics, where the actual observations that we're seeing from how matter is in the universe doesn't really make sense, Unless there is something else going on with hypothetical particles, such as axions for example, that can actually explain what we're seeing. 
And so trying to figure out if axions exist and what mass they have has been a problem in physics for many years. And it was a problem that had nothing to do with dark matter. In this case, the scientists were really trying to solve one of the older mysteries in physics of why the universe and the matter in the universe is the way it is. But, as a kind of a side note, someone proposed that maybe, if axions do exist, they could also explain the mysterious dark matter. And a lot of the observations and a lot of the mathematics behind it kind of made sense. And so basically, if axions were real, and if they had very specific masses, they would actually solve two mysteries at the same time. The mystery of dark matter and not seeing dark matter, but also the mystery of why particles are the way they are. But powerful magnetic fields should still be able to reveal them. And so a lot of studies have been trying to find them around black holes, neutron stars, or even our own sun. But so far, obviously nothing. And this is kind of what this paper is trying to explain or trying to tackle. It actually suggests that all of this extra light, or basically twice as much as we expected, could really be coming from very specific types of axions all over the universe, being annihilated by magnetic fields in the universe, and then creating light. And since they make an actual physical prediction for their mass, 8 to 20 electron volts, it gives other studies and other scientists a reason to prove or disprove this, because this is a mass that was never looked at. In this case, the mass proposed is much lighter than a lot of other predictions, and none of the dark matter or axion detectors have never tried to find particles of this mass. Okay, not entirely correct. Xenon NT experiment, which is an upgrade of the, an older Xenon experiment, can potentially detect them, but it's only started operating very recently, and there haven't been any major releases just yet. But more importantly, these initial observations from New Horizons now kind of give a reason to try this with a lot of other observatories, focusing on the same type of light and similar detections. These feature experiments that are known as the line intensity mapping, that you can actually learn more about in one of the papers, kind of involve studying these slices of the universe at different frequencies in order to make new discoveries. And so by doing these at different frequencies and looking at different parts of the universe and using other instruments such as the ultraviolet detector on the New Horizons or even gamma ray telescopes we have operating nearby, it might become possible to either detect more of these signals or even find other frequencies of light that could be explained by other types of axions as well thus potentially proving this idea. But at the moment, it's just a first proposition. We still have no idea if axions are real, we still have no idea what's causing much brighter optical background light, and we still have no idea if dark matter is even real. But maybe within the next decade, we'll have some of these answers from some of the future studies. And until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. As always, all of the relevant links and studies are in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.